I work for Nigeria, and I think one of the main developers of Remar Lab. If you don't, if you still don't know what Remar Lab is, what it is, and everything is there. So today I'm going to show you which are our next steps on the platform and how we're going to get to have a, the first stable version of Freeborn Lab. In spite of the fancy title of, the, of this talk, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to reduce your expectations about that because I'm not going to show you anything mind-blowing or new or uh, uh, revolutionary. This is not rocket science, so uh, probably you, will, you have seen this before in, a, in many other platforms. So, but this is our, our ideas and what I'm going to do on the next ideas. So what I'm going to show you is what we were, what we are, and what we will be, I hope. <laughs> So everything started like 15 years ago when a PhD student named Gregorio uh, Robles started with studying a software, a software development and they started to get the, he need, uh, he need some tools to analyze the software repositories like series but at that time we didn't have those kind of tools, so we had to create one. And the first one was a simple script to, to get the commits from a series repository. That later evolved into series analysis. Maybe some of you know about this tool. About this tool. And with that tool, uh, we can say that Jesus uh, David, there and Gregorio, they built Libresoft. It was our research group in, in well, it's still a research group in uh, Universidad de Juan Carlos in Madrid. And they are focused in the analysis of free, libre, open source software. Uh, I started to work with them in 2006, I think. And at the time, we started to to, to create new tools. We, we, need, we needed tools for analyze uh, each of the repositories like Parcilla, Parcilla, uh, Redmine, GitHub, for instance. And we need more tools to analyze uh, what else, uh, pull request. So we created what we called Metrisu Redmine. It was based on in Python, but uh, in 2012, I think, we started with Eternia. It's a company that analyzes software, so and I work there too. And we created a company because in the university we didn't have all the facilities, all the uh, yeah, all the yeah, resources to to do the, the things we did, we wanted. So we create we, we follow with the, with the development of metrics in more, but we need something else. We need uh, we need uh, we need uh, something to visualize the data. We didn't have those tools. So we create this more. But two years later we we realized that our our tools were getting old. So we were doing the we were doing the things the other way. So we decided we decided to decide to create uh, something that we call Paper Lab. So maybe I'm showing you this slide first. This is Paper Lab now. So what we have is. Everything starts here. It's the stretch the structure uh, component. And it's we start with Perceval and Arthur. Perceval is the structure tool. It's uh, it's 
work is to do do is to it, 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 sorry. I'm with the, with the jet lag, so I'm in Spain and nine hours. So. Okay, so first of all, it's the tool that we use to retrieve data from several data sources. So far, we analyze three different, thirty different data sources like Twitter, GitHub, Mozilla, uh, Slack, Redmine, Telegram, GitHub, with uh, Git, of course. So we get the data. The data actually is uh, just a uh, Job schedule or a job schedule. And we process, we process, process the data with game water. Yeah. So here we also have the identities manager, which is based on something hard. I will give a workshop this evening about this afternoon about it. And we used uh, the Elasticsearch to restore the data. And we used uh, here, which is a form of Ibarra to visualize the data. This is what we have now. So as I said, uh, we, we are part of Tails, of course, we are here. Uh, everything is based on Python, but the Elasticsearch and Ibarra parts, of course. And we support more than 330 data sources, but we have several problems now because most of our code is tightly coupled with uh, Elasticsearch and Diva. Then we also have legacy code from uh, Metrics in Command. So those are the things that we want to change. This is the kind of that's what we create in the area. So, well, we don't have a monster now, but it's kind of a monster <laughs> because the uh, problems, as I said, uh, we have problems of deployment because we are mixing legacy tools with the new ones, so it's hard to do that. We are. We have problems with, with the visualization and the way we store data because we use Elasticsearch and Kibana um, that use uh, non SQL databases. And when you try to analyze data with that, it's not easy as you use. So you can do it with uh, other databases like MySQL or something. We also have problems with data manipulation because of that, and of course, with monitoring. So, this is the future. It's, it's uh, what we want to do is uh, what, what we want to have is a gray box. So, uh, a gray box because the idea is that you will be able to get anything from here, any of these components, and reuse them to any any place or with your own tools. For instance, they will, this is based on two main components, this one and this one. The first one is to retrieve data and to create a, a common data model. So far we don't have a data model. We, give, we just provide the same data that we get from, the, from our sources. But this gives, uh, with that, uh, that idea, we had several problems with, when it started regarding with issues, because uh, an issue in Mozilla or an issue in a trend mine or fabricator or GitHub are not the same, but they share common things. But now we treat we treat them differently. So the idea is to have a data model, a common data model for all those kind of things, and then it would be easier to manipulate the data and to get info from it. So here we have a component that we retrieve the data and we provide a streaming of data. So the idea is, okay, I will configure that, 
this thing with I want to uh, get issues from this report from this repository on, on GitHub, from that other repository on Git, and from Slack, and so etc. So you will get data from that, and you can install there and just look look in your uh, your component of your uh, of your own tool to analyze the whole that thing. And here, of course, we will have the, our uh, component to analyze the data. We will have the theory, with, which will be the uh, component to with, uh, to manage repositories, so they have, which manage, uh, manages the uh, entities of the our database knowledge. Probably it would be it would be based on uh, GraphQL and MySQL. We will have other tools to refine the data and to provide analysis of the studies. And of course, we will have an API to get access to all of them and to control all of them. So, well, I already said this, so nothing here. But our plans for enforcement 2019 will be. We will want to have to define the data model based on probably on what of course on check of chaos metrics. We will have a real data of the of the platform and we will improve sorting that. I will talk more about this later in my workshop on that. So that's what we want to do for our project. That's all. Any question? No. Okay. So, for, I may be wrong on this, but the way I understand is you guys want to move away from the last search and remodel eventually? Is that no, 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 it's not that idea. But now the, the problem that we have is the, the data we generate, it's only for Kibana. Okay. It's not for storing them in another place, places like MySQL or whatever. So it's focused on, on that. So. so the end part is to be a bit more agnostical with the tools surrounding the model. Model right now is very tightly uh, related to both Elasticsearch and Kibana. But there is nothing specific about that. Because in the end, it's just uploading items to a database. So it could be updated to, say, MongoDB, or even to our validation of database, or producing CSV files. So the idea is to make that easier. Because right now, you can't do that. But you need to write the code for doing that. So you would be just happy to speed in that. It's like being a bit more modern. Your future architecture, does it include the would I assume, can I assume each of them would be like a microservice or is it would be running within a container each of them or it's a great box of container on its own? Well, this would be a microservice. Each one's a microservice in that sense. It's like uh, not really. Not really. This this one it is. It's more this will be uh yeah, this will be a microservice. But and this one too and this one too. And of course, what needs to be an interface for this will be also an interface for So, not everything will be a microservice. So, you're suggesting that your analysis and studies box, that's some code that's going to run there, or is it meant to be done by somebody else? Or something else? Now, I'm just looking at the boxes that which of those are actual code that's going to be running. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then the top one, the analysis and studies, right? Is that some code that you're going to be running there? Yes, of course. And, and the idea is that anyone can grab their tools there. So you don't have to use all the, the whole platform. We'll be able to grab everything. So as we are providing a data model, a common data model, we will get that data intervention. So but right now there is a tool called Manuscripts, which is a part of your model. Which works on the bridge indexes and produces things like PDF reports. But the idea is that again, there is nothing special in that tool. So any tool could just plug on the indexes and produce the kind of information which is interesting to you. So the idea is to provide models so that it's easier 
field that took in food supplies to the house. And, uh, if I have can, can say something about contribution, contribution during the last year, the more I have tried to be as much independent of the area as possible. You know, the, as uh, Santi said, this started as a tool by the Georgia and the university before that. But when we joined, joined CALS, we decided that we wanted to make it a community. Uh, so right now, some people who is from, not from Georgia, but from our companies are starting to contribute, and you are welcome. Not only by writing code, but by using, submitting issues, or giving ideas, anything else, is welcome. So the intention is during the next year, one of the main focus of the company itself is to try to make this a really community thing. Because right now it's still too much a rhetoric thing. So consider this as the first open discussion of the next week, the next release of a remote lab. So if any of you want to join the discussion or something else, just talk to us. And we are more than happy to try to accumulate any kind of records or something like that. On code, of course. Thank <laughs> you.